Hello and welcome, everyone. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. You're listening to my strategy. We're on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. We're well, very happy to be here with you today and really glad that you could join us. Uh, our episodes are live and on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, in this show, we're going to be talking about accountability, talk a little bit about how to uh, hold someone accountable, discuss the importance of accountability, the truth about accountability, best ways to keep people accountable, and I'm also going to talk about some frameworks that you can use uh, to help do all of that. Well, again, very happy to be here today. Saturday, for me, is the best day of the week to reflect on how things are going. It's a great day to start thinking about my strategy and probably a good day for you to think about your strategy as well. Give you an update on the show. The show is growing. Uh, we're now available on iHeart, iTunes, Player FM, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spreaker, and much many more platforms. So if you did miss an episode, you can find them there. You can also find me on Twitter at HawkinsJohn or if you go to JohnMHawkins.com. And just like anything in life, we need to have a strategy and plan to help us reach our goals because the best laid plans don't always work. Now, this week we are talking about accountability, and I am looking for your stories on being accountable. So if you have any good examples, a tip, or a trick, please send it to talk at johnmhawkins.com. That's talk at johnmhawkins.com. Weekly, uh, we take those submissions enter them into a raffle, and you, if you win, you will receive a copy of my latest book, Coach to Greatness, and also a $25 uh, Visa gift card. Well, today we're talking about accountability. So in this show, we're going to talk about the importance of accountability in leadership. And it's not just leadership per se, but leaders, leaders per se, but it applies to everyone. We're going to talk a little bit of, a bit about how to build trust, uh, performance and competence. We're also going to talk a little bit about the truths of accountability. Account Being accountable starts with you. It's not a one-time thing, and it applies to everyone. We'll also talk about reasons you can't hold people accountable. So why are some of the reasons why you're not able to hold people accountable? We'll talk a little bit about setting expectations, reinforcement of your words, not being consistent, which is going to lead us into talking about the right way to hold people accountable with proper expectations, making sure they have the capacity, measurement, feedback, and consequences. We'll then talk a little bit about how you can put all this together into a strategy. Well, the importance of accountability in leadership. This uh, article I've got is um, from a blog called Lead Like a Champion, and it talks about accountability being a desired trait for any organization. It says here, if you're running a business or organization, expect your members, employees, stakeholders, and shareholders to desire it. Why is accountability such an important leadership principle? They give us four reasons that we're going to go through here. Well, it says here, accountability builds trust. Accountability, the most important result of accountability is trust which is essential in any relationship. Being accountable to something means that you're willing to make a commitment and responsible for your own actions. A few episodes ago, we talked about trust and the importance of it. Well, being accountable is one of those things that we discussed then, and it applies now. It says here, this promotes trust between you and the people around you in a contract or covenant. You're entrusted to protect something. When you hold yourself accountable to this trust, you're effectively telling people that you are going to admit it and make amends when the trust is broken. Second thing, it says that accountability improves performance. Accountability eliminates the time and effort you spend on distracting activities and other unproductive behavior. According to their research, it shows that some people have a tendency to engage in ineffective behavior. Well, don't we all at times? Without accountability, you may only catch these behaviors when mistakes and errors have already been made and your organization has already suffered the loss. By building a culture of accountability at the onset, you rid your organization of ineffective behavior. I think that's one of those things that's going to be really important is 
having a culture of accountability. Another thing they say here is that accountability promotes ownership. When you make people accountable for their actions, you're effectively teaching them to value their work through positive feedback and corrective actions. They learn that their behaviors and actions have an impact on the team. They're not just floating members without clear roles to play. They're important to your organization. When people know they're valued and feel important, they're more driven to work hard. They learn to have a sense of ownership in what they do. You know, think about that. Somebody who owns something, an asset, versus borrowing it or leasing it. If you own something, you're more likely to take care of it. Accountability inspires confidence. When done right, accountability can increase your team member's skills and confidence. Don't mistake accountability for controlling behavior. The key is to provide the right support, give constructive feedback, improve your member's suggestions, give them freedom to decide, challenge them to think of better solutions as a team. Given these reasons, it's important that you build a culture of accountability from the start. Remember that accountability is building a culture of trust and not fear. I think that's an important consideration here. How many times have you been at work or in a any sort of a social situation or interpersonal relationship, having a conversation with someone and you think things are going fine, and all of a the sudden they call you out for not doing something? Maybe something that they had not set the proper expectation that they wanted you to be doing. All of a sudden, you feel you're put in a position where things don't really make sense. You're, it's because they have not properly set the expectations, and now they're coming out trying to hold you accountable for something that you might not have known was important to that person, or it could have been something that you knew was important, but they never really said anything, so you continued to do it. So those are some of the tips that uh, they give uh, with regard to uh, being accountable. And I think it's important, you know, as you think about the importance of accountability and leadership, which is the title of this article, it's not only the leaders that are important, as I had stated earlier, but it is also important for everyone in the organization or in any sort of relationship to hold each other accountable. If people are not being held accountable, then they are not able to meet the goals and objectives. If they're not being held accountable, you're not able to progress and get to that vision or that future state to which you are aspiring to get to. So being accountable means a lot of things. And I think you know, one of the things that's going to be important is later on in the show, we're going to talk about some frameworks that you can use and put in place to help hold people accountable. Because it's not easy, you know, going through life and trying to figure out when to hold someone accountable and when not to. It's much better to have a framework in place that you can use as a tool, as a framework, to, and if you consistently use it, to keep people accountable. And, you know, as we go through this, I think it's also important for us to realize that a lot of this is about communications and the interpersonal relationships. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about seven truths about accountability. We'll be right back.
Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins. You're listening to my strategy. We're on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. We're very happy to be here with you today. Today, we're talking about accountability. Right before the break, we were talking about the importance of accountability in leadership. In this segment, I want to talk a little bit about the seven truths about accountability. Starts with you. Not a one-time thing and applies to everyone. Later in the show, we'd love to get your phone calls. The studio number is 866-451-1451, or you can send an email to talk at johnmhawkins.com. Again, for those uh, submissions to talk at John M. Hawkins, you will be entered for our weekly giveaway. So I've got this article called The Seven Truths About Accountability That You Need to Know. Now, this is an article that appeared in Inc magazine and it says here accountability doesn't happen just by chance it has to be implemented the author is gordon treadgold it says here having worked with hundreds of businesses senior executives and management teams one topic that is always difficult to broach is accountability he says that many people don't understand what accountability is why it is important or where it starts Yet they understand accountability is important, but don't know how to create a culture of accountability. They just hope it will happen. And this is the second time we've heard culture of accountability. And for whether we're building a business or at work and in an organizational culture at work, or it's an interpersonal relationship, I think that's one of those key takeaways is think about the culture of accountability. He says here, because hope is not a strategy. So he's giving us the seven truths about accountability. Number one, accountability starts with you. You may have um, to be seen to take ownership. When you make commitments, you have been seen to meet those commitments. But if you don't, then why should anyone else be interested in doing so? That's from the leadership perspective. You are accountable. As the leader, you are accountable. You're accountable for any failures, as well as any successes in the organization. If it's not you, then who? If you do try and duck your responsibility, others will see it, and it will have a negative impact on the level of accountability that already exists, or perhaps does not exist. Number three, he says, is accountability is not a one-time thing. Accountability is not a one-time thing, sometime thing. It's an all-time thing. Those people who don't want to be held accountable or be accountable are always looking for opportunities to get out of it by filling by, out of it by filling gaps by filling gaps in your accountability will give them what they need. So again, accountability is not a one-time thing that goes back to creating the culture which means that you have to have a habit. You have to be in a habit of holding people accountable, also being accountable yourself. Accountability applies to one and all. When you're looking to hold people accountable, you cannot play favorites. You cannot let it slide with some people. Accountability has to be consistently requested of everyone all the time. How true is that? Someone's a friend with the boss and they get... They're let out of their responsibility. They're not being held accountable. What message or signal does that send to the rest of the employees in the organization? Or if you have a group of friends and you have different standards for those friends, the other friends will see that you are not holding others to the equal amount of accountability. It says you cannot delegate accountability. Accountability is something that has to be accepted for that person to feel accountable, and to have them take ownership. The best way to get people to accept accountability is to set them up to be successful. No one is going to take ownership or short accountability for something that they know or believe is going to fail. It comes down here to the belief. Having people want to take the responsibility, but also take ownership for it. If they take ownership... As we mentioned earlier, when you own something, you're going to better take care of it. Number six, accountability is the difference between success and failure. When people don't take accountability and things, start th then things start to go awry. 
As they don't feel ownership, they go into a spectator mode and watch as things fall. If they thought it would fail from the onset, or even worse, they go into the I told you so mode, which nearly always becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. How true is that? Ever been in an organization where no one is taking accountability? People are just rudderless, working through various activities? That also means that they are not following a plan, but they might not also be held accountable to what they need to be doing. Now, there's other reasons behind that. As I mentioned, if the plan is not in place or there's not an alignment or they're unsure about what needs to happen, that also can impact their ability to do what they are responsible for and also be held accountable. Number seven, he says, you have to hold people accountable. You can't just tell them they're accountable or leave it up to them. Yes, it may work for some time, but not for all. You need to set up review sessions, check in to see how people are doing. It serves a purpose, he says. There's three things it does. It lets them know that they will be held accountable for the activities. It gives you an opportunity to provide support in case things go awry. It offers you the support to offer praise and encourage to move people further if things do not go well. It says accountability is something that has to be worked on, that has to be clear and consistent strategy or how it's going to be implemented and validated. It all starts with you, applies to everyone, and must be adhered to at all times. What are some of the things about accountability that you know? What are some of the truths? Some of the truths that, you know, it does start with us, but it also goes into a lot of those core values that we have, right, with regard to trust, communication. How is it that we are, are dealing with others? Are we keeping our word after we say we're going to do something? How do we treat others in the organization? All of those things do have an Im impact on how we relate with each other, and it can also impact the accountability of it. And are they being accountable? So as you kind of think about what are some of the things that do and do not work, it's also important to start thinking about some of those things that do work. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. This is my strategy. We're on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about reasons why you can't hold people accountable. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. This is my strategy. 
I am your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Well, very happy to be here with you today and really glad that you could join us. These episodes are live and on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Right before the break, we were talking about the seven truths about accountability. Now, it starts with you, not a one-time thing. It applies to all. In this segment, I want to talk about reasons why you can't hold people accountable. It has to do with expectations, reinforcement of words, not being consistent, some of the things that we talked about in the other segment. I'm going to be leaning on an article I have here from um, Thoughtful Leader. The title of it is, Four Reasons Why You Can't Hold People Accountable. The author says, Something is nagging at you. It's stopping you from moving forward. You rack your brain trying to figure it out, trying to figure out just what it is. Electricity fires in your brain. That's it. You need the people in your team to be more accountable for what they do. The problem is that you can't hold people accountable. How many times have you been told to be held accountable for something or someone's told you to do something or given you feedback and you haven't listened to them? Well, a couple shows ago, you're we talking about trust, and if you don't trust them, you're less likely to take their feedback. Many times has someone come to you and say, you're not doing that right. Here's how you should do it. Well, is that the way to hold somebody accountable by telling them how to do it? The author here says, well, why not? Holding people accountable is not something that happens overnight. You cannot flick a switch and turn on accountability. Accountability is a framework, a system, a way of operating. We're going to talk uh, later on in the show about some frameworks that you can use, but that is true. You have to have a framework in place. And whether it's a framework that you develop on your own or whether you use one of the frameworks out there to hold people accountable or perhaps even through process, you know, the key is to have something in place. So number one, you can't hold people accountable because you've not set expectations. If you've never discussed with your team what will happen if performance is poor, if deadlines are missed, or if people behave inappropriately, you will find it difficult to hold people accountable. The author says this is because most of us like to be reasonable people. It would be unreasonable if one day you let poor performance slide and the next day you turn around and punish someone for a simple mistake. But that's a good point. You know, how many times are you interacting with those people that you are working on a common goal or working towards a common outcome? And you're not communicating with them and perhaps time goes by. Work is being done. You don't say anything. You're reviewing work and then one day you look at what they're doing and for all you know flip out and you know condemn them for what they've done well that's not really a good way to do it she says if you want to start holding people accountable on your team it's important to draw a line in the sand make it clear that from now on when some thing happens the result is going to be there's going to be some consequence so here we go setting the expectations if this happens this is what will happen and you have to be consistent about it. So that's her first tip, setting the expectations. Number two, you can't hold people accountable because your actions don't reinforce your words. You'd say you want people to be more accountable, but your behavior speaks volumes. What does it say? You work hard to set expectations with the team. They know you need to deliver by the deadline, and it was agreed. So when that deadline slides by, what happens? Does anything happen? If not, then your words don't match your actions. When this happens, your words become far less powerful. Why would anybody believe what you say when you clearly don't mean it? Your words lose their power when people realize the actions do not reinforce them. One thing to say, another thing to do. Reinforce with actions. And those actions do speak louder than words. Where have I heard that before? Number three. You can't hold people accountable because you aren't persistent and consistent. Each time an opportunity arises to enforce the accountability in your team, you need to act in a consistent way. If you are inconsistent in your approach, 
to reinforcing the rules to your team, then your team will become confused and frustrated. Well, that's not a good feeling to be confused when you're at work. That confusion, lack of clarity can lead to frustration, anger, stress, lots of implications. The more consistent you are with holding people accountable, the less you will need to reinforce it. Setting the expectation, finding a way to measure it, provide consequences. If this is not done, this is what happens, and it's consistent. That makes life easier for everyone. Number four, you can't hold people accountable because you're not aligned. Well, this is a good one, and since I like to talk about goals and alignment, she says here, it's all very well wanting to improve accountability in your team, but if there is universal buy-in, but is there universal buy-in for the approach? When you're trying to hold people accountable, you need to have the majority of your colleagues and other leaders aligned. How true is that? What are we working for? Gives an example. Tony is trying to get her team to care more about hitting deadlines. She wants to get her team to a place where missing deadlines is the exception rather than accepted behavior. Sometimes Tony's team works with Bob's team to get things delivered. Unfortunately, Bob doesn't run a tight ship and doesn't really worry about deadlines too much. It's done when it's done, he says. The problem in this situation is that Tony's team will see the accepted behavior of Bob's teams, which really will put the seed of doubt in their minds. Do deadlines really matter? Bob doesn't seem to think so. But if Bob happens to be quite influential, this could really undermine Tony's approach. Imagine that. You have two different teams, or a you know, mother and father. One says one thing. The other says the other. That causes confusion if they are not aligned. You know, how many times have you perhaps gone to one parent over the other because you knew the answer would be yes? So if you go to the parent that's always going to say yes, that's great that as a child you get what you want. But the challenge is, is that you're, there's not an alignment between the parents. So those good parents are going to talk and make sure that the actions align with the accountability and that there's consequences for it. It's e you know it's it's the easy way is to go out and you know work with somebody who will help you get the job done. However, if you do that, it does cause other issues and perhaps lead to mistrust. You're listening to my strategy. I am your host John M Hawkins. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we are going to talk about the right way to hold people accountable. We'll be right back.
Hello and welcome back, everyone. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. You're listening to my strategy. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Well, if you're just joining us, uh, very happy to be here with you today. Glad you can join us. Uh, my strategy episodes are live and on Saturdays, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. In this show, we're talking about accountability, talking about being held accountable, the importance of accountability, the truth about accountability, the best way to keep and hold people to make them accountable. We're also discussing some frameworks to manage all of it. Well, we'd love to get your thoughts. Glad to take your phone calls later in the show at 866-451-1451. It's better to send an email, though, to talk at johnmhawkins.com, because if you send the email with a tip or trick to talk at johnmhawkins.com, you will be entered into our weekly giveaway. With your feedback, uh, we're giving out to uh, one lucky winner a copy of my latest book, Coach to Greatness. We're also giving you a $25 Visa gift card. We've been talking about being held accountable and accountability. Right before the break, we were talking about reasons why you can't hold people accountable. In this segment, I want to talk a little bit about the right way to hold people accountable. It comes down to setting expectations, having the capability. Does someone have the capability? Measurement, feedback, and more. Leaning on an article here by Peter Bregman. It's called The Right Way to Hold People Accountable. We need to aim for clarity. In this uh, article, he says, John was doing his best to be calm, but his frustration was palpable. Janine was explaining that there was little chance her group was going to make the numbers for this quarter. Honestly, she said, these numbers aren't realistic to begin with. It was really unlikely that they were going to make them. That's when John absolutely lost it. You agreed to the numbers. In our budget meeting, you came up with them. Jeannie was silent for a while. Then she stammered out a weak defense that John promptly tore apart. Later, when John and I were debriefing the conversation, he asked me a question that I have heard countless time from countless leaders. How do I get my people to be more accountable for results? It says here, accountability is not simply taking the blame when something goes wrong. It's not a confession. Accountability is about delivering on a commitment. It's responsibility to an outcome, not just a set of tasks. It's taking initiative with thoughtful, strategic follow-through. And it's necessary at all times, at all levels, in the hierarchy. Executives high on the org chart can't really be accountable unless the people who report to them also follow through on their commitments. And I think this is an important point. Executives on the org chart, high on the org chart, cannot be accountable unless the people who report to them also follow through on their commitments. And this is partially why having the culture support it is absolutely imperative. If your culture doesn't support it and people are not doing what they need to be doing, the business doesn't meet their goals. Says here, this is a struggle. Of course, I have it. I have seen leak. I have seen it leaders direct, question, and plead. I haven't seen them yell, or I have seen them yell, act passive aggressively, and throw up their hands in frustration. All in the service of holding people accountable. It can be pretty frustrating when you've got a goal to meet, and you're relying on people to do what they said they would do. They don't do what they said they are going to do then how are you going to meet your goal? And this applies to absolutely everything we do in life. Let's say we're in a band, and the bassist doesn't practice and doesn't do what they are told. When you go to perform, how will your music sound? It's not going to be very good. Or if you're a baseball team, a football team, any sort of team, they know what it's like to hold each other accountable. It's the same thing in business. Small business, it's the same thing there. Big business, interpersonal relationships. So he gives us some tips here. He says the first is to set clear expectations, which we heard earlier in an earlier segment. Be crystal clear about what you expect. This means being clear about the outcome that you're looking for, how you'll measure success, and how people should go about achieving the objective. 
It doesn't all have to come with you. In fact, the more skilled your people are, the more ideas and strategies should be coming from them. But this must be a two-way conversation before it's over. Ask the other person to summarize the important pieces. We need strategic thinkers that we work with, not tactical think thinkers. A tactical person will think about what it is they're doing and not be thinking about the overall objective, not be thinking about the goal, the what we are trying to accomplish. And that doesn't help you meet your goal. Number two, he says, is clear capability. What does the person need to meet the expectations? What resources will they need? If the person does not have what is necessary, can they acquire what's missing? If so, what's the plan? If not, you need to delegate to someone else. Capability. How important is that? Let's say we had our band and we had a new bassist who's only been playing for a year. And the rest of the team members have been playing for 10 plus years. They don't have the capability to be the bassist. Maybe they're not sure what it's like to do practice or perfect practice. Making sure you find somebody who's capable for the job is incredibly important. Now it might show, you know, it'll be pretty clear when you have a band member who's not performing. But what about when you have a home business or a family business or an organization and you have somebody who's not carrying their weight? They're not capable. You're not able to perform. Clear measurement. Nothing frustrates leaders more than being surprised by failure. Sometimes this surprise is because the person who should be delivering it is afraid to ask for help. Sometimes it comes from premature adoptism on both sides. Optimism, sorry. On both sides. Either way, it's completely avoidable. Clear measurement. How do we know if we are meeting our goals? He also says clear feedback. We talked about that in one of our shows. And also clear consequences. Making sure that we've set up those consequences for those who do not do as they have been asked and are not being held accountable. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about creating your strategy. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back. This is my strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. We're very happy to be here with you today. Glad you could join us. Today we've been talking about accountability. Right before the break, we were talking about the right way to hold people accountable. In this episode, we've been talking about accountability in general. 
discuss the importance of accountability, the truth about accountability, the best way to keep and hold people accountable, and also discussing some frameworks to manage it all. Well, you've joined us. If you've just joined us, you've joined us at the part where we're going to talk about creating your strategy, creating your strategy to be hold, pe hold people accountable and be better at accountability in general. So when I think about creating a strategy, I think about creating, you know, a, a systematic approach or using a systematic approach. And my systematic approach has five key things in it. It's the awareness, number one. Uh, number two is assess and analyze. And three is strategize and plan. Four is implement your plan. And then five is support and evaluate. So as we're thinking about being accountable and holding people accountable, we want to think about what is our vision, our goals, what is it that we want to achieve we want to start thinking about that because that is if you don't have a vision or goals or an objective, it's very difficult for us to go out and put together a plan. So what is it that you are looking for in regard to accountability? Are you looking at fixing an interpersonal relationship? Do you have a small business and you are in this small business and things aren't getting done and people aren't being held accountable? Are you part of a large organization? And the large organization, you feel frustrated because you might have been told that you're not doing what you are supposed to do, but there is no accountability for others. There's lots of different reasons. So we want to be thinking about what is the vision, what is our goal here? We then need to assess and analyze. By assessing the situations and doing analysis, we can figure out what steps to take. How are we feeling in our organization, in this situation? Is it something where there's not equity amongst all players, where somebody doesn't have the ability to do something, and yet they're in a position, and you're forced to work with them, and there's some stress as a result of that? It's important to figure out exactly what is going on, because if you do not understand exactly the problem statement, how do you solve the problem? It goes back to fifth grade math. If you're given if you're not given a problem statement and you have to solve the equation and you're given this piece of paper and said, what's the answer? How do you solve it? Or what if it just has one line and it's a word problem? You need the information to be able to solve the problem. So by whatever means, assess and analyze. Get that information. Ask people questions. You know, talk to uh, people. Do a survey. You know, there's lots of ways you can get that information. Once you've figured out what the problem is, you need to strategize and plan. Now, one of the things that I wanted to share is that, you know, we talk a lot about the strategy and the plan and coming up with it. But in this segment here, I want to talk specifically about a tool that you can use. And it's one of those tools that I use for uh, roles and responsibilities, and it's called the RACI matrix, R-A-C-I. Um, the information I got here, I'm leaning on from an article that was published in CIO Magazine, and Bob Cantor is, is the author. The race, it says here, the RACI matrix is a responsibility assignment chart that maps out every task, milestone, or key decision involved in completing a project which assigns which roles are responsible for each action item, which personnel are accountable and where appropriate, who needs to be consulted or informed. The acronym RACI stands for the four roles that stakeholders must play in any project. Well, that is a, a pretty heavy framework, and there's a lot to it. But quite simply, if you think about it, on anything that you're, let, let's say anything you're focusing on, let's say you're the team, or you've got that band, what you do is you just need to identify who is responsible, who is accountable, who is consulted, and who is informed. So if there's a task involved, that you need to do as part of your overall goal, you figure out who's going to carry those roles. So the responsible person are the people who do the work. You must complete a task or an objective. So that is what a responsible person is. Now, the second role is accountable. This is the person or stakeholder who is the owner of the work. They must sign off and approve when the task is done. They must make sure that the responsibilities are assigned for, in the matrix for all related activities. There can only be one person accountable, right? So we've got these four roles. We've got responsible, accountable. You can only have one person. 
Then there's consulted, where it's people or stakeholders need to give input before the work can be done and signed off, kept in the loop, and then informed. Those people or stakeholders who need to be kept in the picture. They need to be updated on progress. So simply put, this framework is a pretty heavy framework and is used to run some of the largest projects at the biggest companies in the world. But if you think about it just from a simple perspective, if you have any task, who is accountable? Well, accountable is the person who's going to get in trouble if that task does not happen. So in the example where we had this band and the bass player was not doing practicing or was not capable, who is going to be accountable for that? There has to be somebody who signs off that says, yes, this is the sound we want. It's the band leader, right? So that person is accountable. You're still going to have other people who are responsible. The band leader could also be responsible for playing in the band. You might also consult people. You have your fans who are you're playing the music for. And there's people who are informed, maybe your record label, to know that, hey, we've got a great song and we're ready to go. But that account, you can only have one accountable person. And that's how these frameworks that um, are used in business can be, and I hate to use this word, but pared down. I didn't want to use the other word I was thinking of, but pare them down so that they're simple. So when I start thinking, when we're thinking about putting together our strategy and plan, you can think about those four responsibilities, responsible, accountable, consultant, and informed. And of course, if you are in a situation where you've uh, got this great responsible uh, RACI chart in place, it's then important to implement your plan and of course, support and evaluate. If your plan is not working, why is it not working? If you put together, you know, your task and you put down the four responsibility areas and let everybody know who's responsible for what areas, why is it not working? And that's where uh, it's important to go back and ask why. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. We're on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about putting your plan in place. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. You're listening to my strategy, and I am your host, John M. Hawkins. And today we've been talking about accountability. We're talking about being held accountable, the importance of accountability, the truth in accountability, the best way to keep and hold 
people accountable and also discussed a framework. In fact, that was in the last segment. We discussed a framework uh, to holding keep people accountable. Well, in case you missed this broadcast, you can listen on iHeartRadio and Apple iTunes. And if you'd like to have something covered in the show, please send an email to talk at johnmhawkins.com. That's talk at johnmhawkins.com. Or you can give us a call at 1-844-MY-STRATEGY. Well, today we've been talking about accountability, and I want to give you my summary and some recommendations on how we can get our plan put into place. We started the show talking about the importance of accountability in leadership, how it builds trust, helps with performance, helps gain confidence. We also found out that it's not just based off of leadership within the organization, but that it applies to everyone in the organization. And it's not just those who are leaders per se, and high up in the organization, but even the rank and file and those who are responsible uh, for getting the work done. We talked about the seven truths about accountability, where it starts with you. It's not a one-time thing, and it applies to everyone in the organization. What are some of the truths that you've learned about being accountable? What are some of the things that you knew before the show, and then after knowing the show, are those still truths? We then talked about some reasons why you can't hold people accountable. Does it have to do with improper expectation setting or not setting expectations? Did you not reinforce your words with actions? Were you not consistent with the messaging? Was somebody not capable, yet they were in a position and still responsible and accountable for getting something done, or perhaps they were responsible and weren't able to do as they were told, or they just weren't capable. All those things help with accountability. Finally, we talked about the right way to hold people accountable with the expectations, the capability, measuring, the feedback, also the consequences, and how important it is to set expectations. Make sure that people understand exactly what it is that they need to be able to do. Gaining the feedback. You know, I think that accountability really is about trust. If if you don't trust someone, are you going to be able to be accountable to them? A couple shows ago, we were talking about feedback. And there was an article that got me thinking about trust and got me thinking about feedback. And, you know, there was a statement that somebody who you do not trust, you're going to have a harder time accepting their feedback. So how does all that fit into the accountability? We then talked about putting together your strategy and using the RACI matrix, and I don't think we need to use the full-on framework of RACI, which is R-A-C-I, but we could learn a lot from it by you know, looking at various tasks or things we need to do within our daily lives and identifying one of those four roles or someone to fill those roles. Now, you might, if it's something you're working on yourself, you might fill all of those roles. You're a responsible, consultant, informed. Well, I don't know how you're going to inform yourself, um, but you know that's definitely something you could do. So as you're thinking about the RACI matrix, how do you apply that to the various tasks and things that you have in your life? And as always, you know, as we do try and make change, it's hard to break our old habits. We need to be aware of some of those patterns, which means that we need to consciously prioritize and make our commitments. Commitments, And coaching always helps. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. You've been listening to my strategy. We're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're very happy to have you with us here today, and we'll see you next time.